the curb Oh, what a climb it was What a journey through my soul Just to find this broken fence is what he uses to make me whole. Well, why, where does one begin um, with a story that is speckled with so much of God's grace? Um, I think I would like to start when I was a young girl of uh, 17, 18. 1976, uh, high school, grade 11. We used to say standard nine, standard nine. I was in a serious motor accident with my father uh, near Mossel Bay. And my head actually went against the windscreen and my spleen ruptured in that serious accident. And um, I nearly lost my life. They did emergency surgery. But I think that... Uh, serious accident made me realize how fleeting life is and that you have to make uh, the best of each and every moment of every day. And so I started living, grabbing the day, carpe diem. And I really try to live my life enjoying each and every minute of every day. So I went to the army after that. I was a soldier for a year. And I went to Stellenbosch University, became a student, got my degree in 81, and then traveled the world, which was amazing. Went to mo most of the big continents and uh, always enjoyed my music. I love music. I write music. It's one of my passions. So I continued doing that. And I subsequently then started working for a film company for eight years, did a weekly column in a newspaper, and really was very creative and, and blessed to be able to, to use what God has given me um, regarding writing and my music. And then um, in 1990, obviously, uh, one needs to, to touch on that. The family dreams realized when I got married to my husband. We've been married now for 26 years. And uh, we started a small family. Shana and Skalk are here today with us, and it's a blessing to have them in my life. Uh, my whole family, we have had challenges, but the Lord has been good to us, and we can testify of His grace throughout all the years. Uh, my husband was a colonel in the SAP, and he uh, worked most of the violent crime um, and serious crime units in the Cape Province. And in 1999, when Shana was a young toddler and Skulk was a boy of about four, um, her husband was shot on Black River Parkway. They tried to assassinate him. 55 bullets were fired into his vehicle, of which um, about three struck, uh, pieces of shrapnel struck him in the neck, the legs, the hands. And it was a real miracle that he survived that attack. Um, Today, he lives with a piece of shrapnel close to the spine, but he's, he's healed. And um, many miraculous situations around that whole year, which I don't want to go into detail with on now. Um, but it was, it was a difficult year for our family. But the Lord came through in a wonderful way. And in that time, some scriptures became very important to me to carry me through my life. And I would like to refer to one or two. Um, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, which says, But the Lord said, My grace is all you need. Only when you are weak can everything be done completely by my power. And of course, Romans 8.28, which says, We know that in everything God works for the good of those who love him. And these verses remained very much a part of my journey. And um, scripture that I built on to, 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 to go through difficult situations. I then started uh, recording more music. I did a children's album. I did a, um, my first album in 1989 um, with a popular song, Kanamanda Ni, which everybody remembers with the Malayan choir. But then I started dreaming of doing a gospel album. And funny enough, for 21 years, the, door, the doors just remained closed. I could not get my music uh, recorded or published by or, or distributed by any company. So I prayed for 21 years for the Lord to help, help me with that. And 
um, obviously he knew, I didn't know, that I had to grow emotionally and spiritually so much more so that I can put more into the music. Um, and it took two decades. Um, so we raised our children and today they are young adults and they both serve the Lord and how, how amazingly grateful we are of that. Um, they've gone on ministry outreaches themselves uh, and both love music as well. And in between their studies, they carry on with that. But um, I then recorded three albums, funded it myself. It was very hard and uh, wrote a couple of books, children's books mostly. And then early in 2009, I said, Lord, it's been so many decades now. I still want to do my gospel album, but nothing materialized. And I had no uh, company that was willing to assist. And um, lo and behold, just after my 50th birthday, they diagnosed breast cancer. And um, I just felt the, 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 the side of my breast was tender and I went for the, the uh, biopsies. They were all negative. And finally, they found that um, it actually, they had to operate. They did a lumpectomy. They removed 12 glands. And yes, it was breast cancer. But luckily it was caught very early and it hadn't spread anywhere else. And so um, I went for six and a half weeks of radiation treatment. And I remember going every day from Melkbosch to Panorama Hospital where the, they did the treatments, uh, playing gospel music in the car. And when I was on those machines, I always used to say to the Lord, Lord, please heal me completely. Use this light. You don't need this light because you are light. But please um, use it if, 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 if you will as the photon light to kill whatever is, is, is ill in my body and heal whatever is, is um, or preserve and protect what is um, healthy. And um, yes, it was a hard and difficult journey, but after seven years, I was in remission still and testified a lot. I did many interviews on radio, spoke to many people, proclaimed the Lordship over my life and really believed that I was healed. And um, this year, the journey was very different because I had to challenge not my faith, but I had to challenge where I was at with the Lord when the cancer of the breast actually metastated, I think that's the word, and went to my neck. So in July or June, uh, we went to the Kalahari and I just felt my arm was very sore. And I thought it was just the um, lymph glands or uh, nodes that they removed, lymph nodes, uh, that caused the numbness in my arm and the aching arm. And I remember just rubbing this arm the whole time as we drove up to the Kalahari and back. But the pins and needles worried me. And isn't it amazing how Lord allows that so that we can be warned. And so when I got back to Cape Town, I went to um, see the uh, local GP and she referred me immediately for a CT scan and x-rays. And yes, they found that the cancer had gone to my neck and a full vertebra had collapsed and two discs and it was already pressing against my spinal cord. Now, I mean, Daniel, I was dancing. I was doing Zumba dance two weeks before that. Just thinking, oh, it's bad posture in front of the laptop and just old age. The neck was sore because of all the whiplashes of the motor accidents that I was in, that I had been um, during the years that, that I grew up. Um, so I never suspected it was cancer and um, it came as a big shock. And they, they removed what they can and they you, took a piece of bone from my hip and placed that into the neck. You can see the scar there, small scar. <laughs> Doctor was very clever. He put it right into the little um, crease in my neck. <laughs> and um, they placed that into the neck with, and fastened the bone and the, and the um, uh, vertebra with titanium plate and screws. So I'm a metal woman now. <laughs> Um, yes, and then I had 12 days of radiation again, and this time the radiation was far worse than the first time because they radiate on a very sensitive area in your neck and your throat, and it was really burning 
for a week and a half, I, it felt like there was fire in my throat. And this arm was extremely sore. And there were times that I really said to the Lord, Lord, I know there's meaning to this. You, you will use it to your glory, but Lord, it's really physically very bad this time. And for my husband, it was hard because he I had to wear a neck brace for two weeks. So he had to drive everywhere and he's got a career still. Anyway, to make a long story short, I sat at the Lord's feet this time. I stared into his eyes and I held on very tightly to the hem of his garment. And I think I became intimately much closer to him. Um, and I would like to share one or two last um, scriptures with you. And I believe that the Lord will open new doors for me, that he'll make good out of this horrible situation. And I trust him that this time around I'm beating this cancer. Um, Psalm 51 verse 8 says, Let me hear the sounds of joy and happiness again. Let the bones that you crushed be happy again. And I found that shortly after I was diagnosed with this um, cancer in the neck. So it was such a confirmation. And then, of course, my mother's uh, um, precious verse that she really loved so much, her special verse. She's not uh, with us anymore. She and my dad passed away quite a few years ago already. But she loved... Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And I've really come to realize that nothing that, that comes on your, on your path is too hard if, you, if, if the Lord holds, holds your hand and you hold on to him. Um, he can guide you. He can make good of it. So that's my prayer for everyone who's battling with this disease, that good will come out of it, that it will become a testimony. And ultimately, we are striving to... Um, the eternity where we will never have pain or grief or sickness again. And that is our, our hope, the hope of glory. So that's my message to everyone. Hard times, Job, we know the story of Job. The enemy wants to test our faith. Uh, but if we love the Lord Jesus and we hold on to him, he will, he will guide us through this difficult path. So that's my, my story and in brief. And if anyone wants to, to contact me for more detail or visit me, um, my Facebook page is available, Razan Fisahi, uh, musician page. Or they can go on YouTube, listen to our music there. My daughter also has songs there. So, um, yes, I just, I'm excited to see what he wants to do next in 2017. And I'm willing to serve and just love and be an instrument in his hand as far as possible. This broken fence is what he uses to make me whole.